What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteNext.com. Today I'm gonna to break down for you how you should perform your sets for maximum gains. Now, it's important to differentiate whether you're pursuing size gains or strength gains, because there's going to be a difference in how you do this. And what I've done is I basically laid out four scenarios and we're using one example exercise, or, or two at most, and in this case we're gonna take a, a bench press. Now, the scenarios are oversimplified. The numbers are arbitrary. As a matter of fact, in our strength pursuit here, I'm using 10 just as a way for us to use simpler math here. Because obviously our strength numbers will be in the lower rep ranges than that. Everything would be scaled down. But it doesn't matter because it still applies as we wake our way through. I want to show you how there's differences in how you perform your sets though, and that's the most important thing. And we can start here with scenario number one. If we were to perform a bench press with straight sets, it would look something like this. Let's say 225 for 10 was our max. And again, we can build strength, guys, at a higher rep range, right? If, if your 10 rep max is 225, and five months from now you could bench press 285 for 10 reps, you've gotten stronger. It's a, it's a metric for strength. But let's say we're at 225 for 10, and we take an adequate rest in between sets, because we know if we're trying to train for strength, you have to allow yourself to recover in between sets, both neurologically and physically, so that you can get back to that bench and perform the same 10 reps with, with, that, with that 10 rep max of yours again. And again, we have three consecutive performances of that because we rested adequately between sets. Now, I'm gonna put out here some poundages lifted across a certain time period for a point that we're gonna make later on. Again, this doesn't really make a whole hell of a lot of, of, of difference when you look at different scenarios. However, in this particular example, I'm gonna show you why it will. 6,750 pounds lifted across those three sets in 13 minutes. Once one minute arbitrarily to perform the set, five minute rest in between, 519 pounds per minute. Great. Scenario number two, we can perform bench and drop sets. And what we talk about here is basically dropping the weight that you used in your bench to failure by 30% and then taking that set to failure as well. So in this case, a 225 pound bench drop 30% would bring, come down to 155. So you perform your first set to failure, 225 for 10, and you drop that down immediately to 155 and rep out. And let's just say in this instance you got eight reps. Well now you're gonna rest again. You're not abandoning strength you know, in entirety in this, in this example here. You're trying to pursue the same idea. So you rest your five minutes between sets. You come back, you do 225, this time you're gonna be doing eight, right? This is a natural drop off because you added three additional sets to failure that you didn't perform here, so coming back to perform the 225 for 10 again is unrealistic. You're gonna probably perform it at a little bit of a decreasing ladder here, eight reps and then seven reps. And you've got the same thing happening even in your drop set as the fatigue continues to amount across the sets. What that does, it actually winds up totaling 8,570 pounds lifted in 16 minutes. It takes a little bit longer because of one additional set to do here, and it comes out to be 535 pounds a minute. Again, is this better than this because of that? You gotta hold on for a sec. Now, scenario number three. We introduce something more of a compound set, but it is still a drop set, and it's a mechanical drop set. This is a bench press into a mechanically easier exercise, however, still able to be done at a higher intensity, in this case, the crossover. I've mentioned this in one of our recent videos about taking a bench press into a crossover and why this is a better example. And the thing that's, that's happening really well here, that's not happening here, is your drop set, your second exercise, is actually complementary to the bench press. What does that mean? Well, the bench press is actually, the mechanics of the bench press are staying the same because you're going from a bench to a bench. And we know that one thing that's lacking from a bench press is full chest range of motion. Right, full activation of the chest. We do not go into resistant adduction across the chest because our hands stay fixed on a bar or even with the dumbbells we have that limitation as I pointed out in, in, in detail on the bench press video. So we know that we're getting complementary stresses here to the chest and because of that, we're actually going to have some other things happen here. So in our first set, if we took 225 for 10 to failure and then performed, let's say 50 pounds in each hand adding up to 100 pounds on the, the crossover, then we would actually have an additional minute for these because one for the right hand, one for the left hand. And then we actually have a drop off, but a more significant drop off in the second set. Why is that? Well, we're not gonna go from 225 to 10 back to eight in the second set. We've done something a little bit more intense. We've taken the chest through a, a higher stress because of the selection of exercises here. So the drop off is gonna be more significant. And if I was still trying to pursue strength here by resting five minutes in between, we would have an output of let's say 10, six, and four, and then 10, eight, and eight for our drop here on the crossover for a total of uh, 7,120 pounds in 19 minutes, a little longer here, for 37, uh, 374 pounds a minute. But there's an alternative way we can do this. We could say, look, 
I understand I'm not, I'm not going to be able to preserve the strength here. This secondary exercise here that taxes my body in the way that it does is, is providing such an overload on the chest that I can't possibly try to mix the, the goals. I'm not trying to mix strength with hypertrophy here. I'm trying to train here for hypertrophy, realizing that the inefficiency created by this secondary movement makes that first movement not so great in terms of my output, but I relent to that. I give in. I allow for that to happen by saying, look, I'm just going to try to maintain my volume. If I maintain my volume in keeping my reps at 10, 10, and 10, then of course my, my total poundage will come down. But something actually interesting happens here. If I go 225 for 10 in the first set and I lift my 100 you know, for my crossover for 10 in, this, in, in that second part of it, well, the second set to get 10, I got to come down to 205. And then to get 10 in the third set, I got to come down to 185. It might be discouraging to some. But when you calculate this all out, again, we've foregone the, the pursuit of strength here. We've, we've relented to that. We've brought our rest time down to three minutes in between sets. That comes out to be 8,550 pounds in a shorter period of time, 15 minutes, for a total output of 570 pounds. Okay? And then there's one final scenario. We can take those two exercises. If this is a good combination, could we flip the order around? Could we go into a bench pre-exhaust? Well, here what we're doing is we're taking the crossover and performing it in front of the bench. But something happens here as well. We know, once again, this is not a strength pursuit, more, more than any, because when you perform that first exercise, like the crossover, we then try to head into our 225 for 10. We can't even get that in the first set because we've actually just taken that muscle and fatigued it, and now we're trying to ask for it to do what our normal 10 rep uh, max is. It's down to seven already. We come back, we have our three minutes rest in between, so we're always going to be able to get our 10 reps on our crossover. Not that that's necessarily that important. But what happens is your bench press continues to suffer. 225 for five, 225 for three. You rest three, uh, three minutes in between sets. It's 6,375 pounds in 15 minutes for 425 pounds a minute. So what do these pounds per minute reflect? Well, they don't reflect everything because you have to de determine again what is your goal. If your goal was strength, I throw this out the window because the only thing that matters here is what is the number of times that you lifted that, that maximum weight that we're lifting here in this occasion. And that is the most time right here, 30 times in this set here, in this scenario. So if I'm pursuing strength, this is the winner. I'm working on increasing the maximum amount of weight that I can move. Right? So even if I have to max, you know, extend the period of time in between sets to do that, if I was training for strength, this is what I should do. And there's a reason why a lot of these other scenarios, which are considered more advanced training techniques, are not used and shouldn't be used by beginners. Because if you're a true beginner, what you should be focusing on is building your foundational strength. We talk about it all the time in Athlete Nexus. Your foundational strength is the basis of everything you do. Now, I've also gone on to say that I, I, I heavily suggest that you work on your correctives at the same time. Because even if you're a brand new person to the gym, your body didn't get into the imbalances and the, in, in, in the, uh, the, the, the differentials in strength, upper body, lower body, right side, left side, from, from, from training. Right? This is your first time in the gym. It got there from everyday life. So you want to address those imbalances. You want to address and correct those things through the right selections of exercises. Because let's face it, guys, an overhead press, a bench press, a squat, a deadlift, none of them are working your rotator cuff. You got to start working in some face pulls. You got to start working in the, the right correctives, band pull-aparts. I know they sound boring, but they go hand in hand. So as you're building on your foundational strength, you're doing it on a solid foundation. Right? You're, not, you're not working around the cracks of a, of a, of a cracked foundation. So that would be part of it. But if we were working for hypertrophy, we're, we're trying to train certainly just straight for muscle growth. Again, we realize that along with the strength training, we're going to see, we've seen it many times before, newbie gains, you're going to see some size gains here. But if you're a little bit further down the road, more advanced, and you're trying to train for hypertrophy, and you've been in the gym for a while, these other techniques start to open up possibilities. And that's when you start to look at what's the workload that I'm doing? What's the amount of stress that I'm applying to a muscle in a certain period of time? If both you and I did the same rate, the same reps, the same uh, uh, exercise, but you did it in 10 minutes and I did it in 20 minutes, your workload would be higher. The output and the stress on your body would be more significant. That's what's called density training. We look at that to give us a reflection of that, and that allows us to start comparing methods. So in these methods, the best scenario would be to use this complementary exercise in this case, the crossover, which complements the, the stress being applied to the chest, and it then allows us to do that in a way that maximizes what's going on here because we're not sacrificing the volume. And we know that how important the volume is to the overall picture. So this would be the winner instead of trying to maintain strength when you start to mix your, mix your messages. 
then mix your training focuses. This would be the winner. Am I saying that pre-exhaust is no good based on these numbers? No. Pre-exhaust has a place. As a matter of fact, what's interesting is people that perform pre-exhaust to try to get more work out of the chest in the second compound part, part of that movement or combination, that's actually not what's going on. The studies will show that the second exercise, the bench press in this case, is actually the activation on the chest is the same. What's significantly being enhanced here is the recruitment and the activation of the accessory muscles to that lift. Namely, in this case, the, the triceps, which has shown a, a dramatic increase in activation there. So without having to forego or, or use partial uh, range of motion to try to work the, the, the sticking point, let's say, in a bench press, the end, you can still use a full range of motion exercise, realizing that the triceps are going to get more recruitment here and therefore contribute more to you know, building your, your ability to, to, to get more tricep recruitment when you need it the most at lockout without having to forego full range of motion reps. So the last point I'll make here is when you train in, in, in straight set fashion here, you know, you have the opportunity because you're, you're sparing yourself all these intensity techniques that can really take you uh, to a point of, uh, of trouble in terms of how much soreness you have in your muscles and make it hard for you to get back into the gym and continue to work on your strength. So if you were really trying to prioritize your strength, this would be the scenario so that you can come back more frequently without having these things be detrimental to your ability to show up in the gym. But for the other reasons that we said here, there's ways to split your workouts up, guys. These are not bad. Right? You can still get back in the gym, but you have to know how to split your workouts up and, 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 and maximize your ability to do this. I actually did a whole video on what training splits you could possibly follow and the advantages and disadvantages to those. You can actually check that video out over here if you haven't already done so. But guys, I hope you found this video helpful. Again, there's a lot of ways to skin a cat, but you have to get focused on what it is you're trying to accomplish and then figure out the most efficient way for you to do that so that you can get the returns you're looking for in the most effective manner in the least amount of time. And that's what we're doing here, guys. And if you're looking for step-by-step -step programs, all of our programs do this depending upon the goal. And they're all over to athletics.com. In the meantime, if you found the video helpful, leave your comments and thumbs up below. Let me know what else you want me to cover. I'll do my best for you. I'll break the muscle markers out, not just to draw on me, but to actually draw on the board if need be. And if you haven't already done so, guys, click subscribe and turn on your notifications so you never miss a new video. All right, guys. See you soon.